In this video, I'm going to be deriving the Weierstrass factorization representations of sin x, cos x, and tan x, basically uh, their infinite products, right? Because as shown on the screen, um, for any polynomial, we can always factor it into a product of its roots. So what if we take that and apply it to functions that have infinite roots, like these trig ones? And we know that they also have their power series representation, so that's kind of like the factorization of an infinite polynomial. So first we're going to start with sine x. Now we know that when sine x is equal to 0, uh, that's going to be when x is equal to pi n, where n is just some integer. So with this in mind, we can write sine x as a product of these roots. Now for the leading coefficient, uh, we're going to figure that out later. I'm just going to call it capital A. And then we have x, and I'm going to write these alternating. So we have x plus pi times x minus pi times x plus 2 pi times x minus 2 pi, and so on. And you may notice that we can actually factor factor these as difference of squares. So let's do that. So we're going to get a times x times x squared minus pi squared times x squared minus 4 pi squared and so on. And now we can write this in product notation as a times x times now it's an infinite product from n is equal to 1 to infinity of x squared minus pi squared n squared, right? Now, the problem here is that just the zeros themselves cannot accurately represent the function. And again, we still need the leading coefficient. Uh, now, if you take a look at the uh, Maclaurin series, you can see that the coefficients pretty much get smaller and smaller. They approach zero. So there is a hint that maybe um, this leading coefficient a might be infinitesimal, right? So a good thing to consider would be limits. Now, we know that the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is equal to one. So how about we take this and apply it with our product for sine x so far and try to find a from that. So then what we're going to have is that the limit as x approaches 0 of a times x times product n is equal from 1 to infinity of x squared minus pi squared n squared. And then this is divided by x. This has to equal 1. So now we already see one cancellation here. These x's are going to cancel. And now we can already plug in 0, direct substitution. So we get a times the product n is equal from 1 to infinity of negative pi squared n squared, which has to be equal to 1. So now we can just divide the product on both sides. And we can also absorb the fact that this division into the product notation. So then we get that a is equal to the product n is equal from 1 to infinity of minus 1 over pi squared n squared. So that's going to be our leading coefficient. And now we can plug that in to our representation. So we're going to have sine x is equal to x times the product for a n is equal from 1 to infinity of minus 1 over n squared pi squared times the product for the roots and from 1 to infinity of x squared minus pi squared n squared, right? And now uh, the nice thing about product notation is that we can absorb or bring these two products together into one, one capital pi. So we're going to get x times the product from n is equal from 1 to infinity. 
and so we have a minus one here then I'm gonna switch the order and then divide so we're gonna have pi squared n squared minus x squared uh, divided by divided by pi squared n squared right and then we can simplify this further to just um, right here these two are gonna divide out into one and then we just have the last part with the x squared so n is equal from one to infinity and we're gonna have one minus x squared over pi squared n squared and that is our infinite product representation for sine of x now moving on to cosine uh, we can actually write uh, cosine in terms of a product or well a division more specifically of sines given the double angle formula sine 2x that's just 2 sine x cos x so then we can solve for cos x from these so we can write cos x we can write cos x as sine of 2x over over 2 sine x and so we can basically use the product representation the infinite product representation that we got for sine of x um, for this to get cosine of x right so now plugging this in so here we have 2x so we're gonna have 2x instead of where the x was product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus now 2x squared that's just 4x squared 4x squared over pi squared n squared and now all of this is divided by 2 sine of x so we're gonna get 2 times the regular product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared n squared and now here's a nice thing we see already this cancellation and that makes sense because we know that cos x uh, does not have um, a root at 0 so that makes sense and now I'm gonna cover a somewhat not obvious simplification like you might think it's better to just absorb this into one capital pi for product notation and then simplify from there uh, but it's gonna be very difficult to simplify I don't think you'll get some nice simplifications but there is uh, a better way to simplify it is if we consider from the top the uh, even and odd terms if we split it up by even sorry even and odd factors right so if we write it as so the product n is equal from 1 to infinity these are going to be the even factors first we have 1 minus 4x squared over pi squared and this is 2n all squared and uh, so that is just going to be 4 4 n squared right and then we have the product of the odd terms so that's going to be n product for n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus 4 x squared over pi squared and now this starts at uh, n is equal to 1 so we can't put 2n plus 1 we're going to do 2n minus 1 because it doesn't start from 0 then you could just put 2n plus 1 but yeah so we have 2n minus 1 squared right and then this is divided by the product on the bottom so we have product n is equal from 1 to infinity I'm gonna make that bigger a little bit n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared n squared right and now you might already notice so the good thing that we considered here like the even terms we have a 4 over there 
and then another four on the bottom. So these cancel, and then now this product on the top for the even terms after simplify, after simplification is the same as the product on the bottom. So now we can just cancel these. And so we just get the product of the odd factors here and it's equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus 4x squared over pi squared 2n minus 1 squared and we're just gonna leave it at that there's not really any better simplification it would be kinda of pointless to expand the square in the bottom but yeah that's what it is for sine sorry that's what it is for cosine x moving on to tangent well uh, here we can just consider already its ratio as sine x over cos x and we're gonna use those products that we got so 10x is sine x over cos x so that's going to be x times the product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared n squared and this is divided by the product for cosine and is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus 4 it's a little funky 4 4 x squared over pi squared 2 n minus 1 squared now in this case I'm not sure if there's any nice simplification here for the terms because the problem is that we have this 4 we have this 4 in the denominator and I don't think there's a nice way to um, properly cancel like using the even and odd factors like before so I think I'm just gonna collect this uh, into one capital pi one product so we're gonna have x times the product from n is equal from 1 to infinity pi squared n squared minus x squared I'm putting these um, uh, uh, over one common denominator so over pi squared n squared and then times the reciprocal because that's what it means for the division for what the bottom is so we have pi squared 2n minus 1 squared all divided by pi squared 2n minus 1 squared uh, minus 4x squared right and so now we see that the pi squares cancel out and that's pretty much it now I'm just gonna write it out properly so we have the x times the product from n is equal 1 to infinity times 2n minus 1 squared pi squared n squared minus x squared all over n squared times pi squared to n minus 1 squared minus 4x squared and yeah I'm not sure if there's really any better simplification again there's a lot of really close calls again with the four almost odd even cancel and then here this almost looks a little bit like it's could telescope but there's some weird stuff which or at least it doesn't make it obvious so this is gonna be our infinite product for 10x alright before I end the video I'm actually gonna give you a bonus proof of the Wallace product uh, applying one of our formulas that we figured out today so the Wallace product is defined as shown here where it's basically the even numbers divided by adjacent odd numbers from n is equal from 1 to infinity now we're just gonna let p be equal to the 
infinite product. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit more. So if we multiply these out and expand them, then we're going to get the product of 4n squared over over 4n squared minus 1. Right? Now, this seems a little bit interesting. Let's consider the reciprocal. So 1 over p. This is going to be just flipping um, what we have in the product. So we have 4n squared minus 1 all divided by 4n squared. And this can again further be simplified as the product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus 1 over 4n squared. Now, don't you think that this looks a little bit familiar to one of our product representations? More specifically, this looks very similar to this looks very similar to the product for sine of x, though here there is no factor in front. So how about we consider just sine of x over x, right? We just divide the x out. n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over pi squared n squared. So now we want to get this 1 over 4 and then the n squared here. Now, how can we do that from what we have in the product? Well, if we set x to be equal to pi over 2, then that's going to work. That's going to be able to cancel out properly, right? So if we do this, and we also consider the right side, we put in pi over 2, the result we're going to get is, so 2 over pi is equal to the product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus, so we have pi squared over 4, and then divided by pi squared n squared, right? And so you can see here that the pi squareds are going to cancel out. And then we just get our product n is equal from 1 to infinity of 1 minus 1 over 4n squared, right? And this is equal to 1 over p. So taking this, it means that the product p is just equal to pi over 2. And that's exactly what the Wallace product is, if you've seen it before. But yeah, so a very interesting application. And there are um, a lot of other applications of these to other different kinds of proofs. And it's useful to know the most common that you'll probably see is sine, not really cosine, and tangent. Again, that's a little bit more of a novelty, along with if you want to consider the um, secondary trig ratios taking a reciprocal, you, you can just do the reciprocal of the of their formulas as products. Uh, but those aren't used as much. Sine is really important to remember though, or sine x over x, if you just divide it out. Anyways, I hope you found this video interesting, and I'll see you in the next one.